at the highest level of the industry that you work in day in and day out, what are some of the most relevant emerging trends that our agents need to be aware of and following? I think it's really important that our agents understand what's happening with EPLI today. You know, in the past, EPLI had been a, a newer coverage with a lot of uncertainty to the types of claims that were coming in, as well as the types of rates and retentions insureds would see year after year. Now that it's been around for a little bit and markets are, have some experience in underwriting it, we are seeing more stable rates. We are seeing a, also a lot of availability of it as well, which may not necessarily be uh, something positive for the environment. With new, new MGAs and new carriers come left and right trying to get into the EPLI space and offer this coverage, you know, some are doing whatever they can to, to win the business and to, to write policies without offering the full scope of coverage that they may need. Okay. You know, and, and our jobs as a broker and our retail agent's job is to understand what the insurer's true exposure is within EPLI. Like, do they have independent contractors on their staff? Or are they contracting independent contractors and need to extend coverage to them? Do they have leased employees? And if so, are they being covered? Um, a lot of insurance policies will just, or a lot of EPLI carriers will just throw out a, a good number and, you know, insureds will just jump at the best premium where, you know, they really should be sifting through to make sure that the proper EPLI coverages are, are included. Um, wage and hour defense costs is, is huge, obviously, and has been for a long time. We are seeing some carriers go from, you know, where they were offering 50 and 100K sublimits in the past to offering 150 and 250. Um, California for EPLI has been <laughs> one of the most difficult states to work in. Aren't they always? <laughs> they are, just, get me started. Yeah, I know. It is, you know, retentions were starting in the six figures in the past, and now we're, we have carriers that are offering 25, 50K for EPLI risks for some of the smaller and more favorable ones. You know, to, to sum up on EPLI, it's, in my, in my opinion, it's stabilized, but keep in mind that just because it's softer and just because there's more carriers doing it doesn't mean that it's always the right, the right enhancements are included in what's being offered. Another trend or another emerging trend I'd like to go over is cyber liability and the increased demand for it. And with the increased demand is the more sophisticated hacks that are, that are coming about. Um, I attended a, a cyber summit actually in the past week that went into detail about cyber liability, not just what it is and how underwriters are viewing it and, and you know what controls they're looking for, but how hackers are just becoming more and more sophisticated and it's easier to be a hacker. It's it, terrifying. It, it, literally, you or I could be a hacker tomorrow if we wanted to. And, and just thinking about how you don't have to be some tech nerd to hack into people, you could buy the software to hack into people. I mean, it, it just shows the uh, infinite amount of breaches that can occur over the next, you know, six, twelve, and you know, few years. But the way that you even say that, it sounds like it's like the sexy thing to illegally be. I mean, oh, it's it's become like you can do it too. Why don't you try? It's like no, don't try. Don't. <laughs> well, I mean, it's always more fun to do something that's you're not supposed to do, yeah. right? So, and what we're seeing now, uh, it's something called ransomware as a service, where literally you or I could go into the dark web. Not, not that I even know where that is, but we could go into the dark web and we could buy the the program that someone would use to hold to hold a company's system ransom. Um, you know, whether it's five, ten thousand dollars, they give you the program. You can then hire another company to show you where there's open ports or open data points in a company's network. So you can go into their network with the software you purchased from company A, hold them ransom for you know fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, a million dollars, whatever you want, and they're paying. Companies have to pay for this if they need their systems. There's also double ransomware, which and this is where it gets even even crazier. You have a ransomware, someone pays it, and you know you, they, they think that they're clear and free, they think that their systems are now um, uh, are, are safe, excuse me, are, are safe. That same bad actor or that same hacker who was in will then come back and say, well, we let your systems go, you know, thank you for the money, but there's more, we want more money or we're gonna release all the information. So they're really double dipping. So not only is it becoming easier for everyday people to hack into companies, 
these bad actors and these hackers are double dipping to take advantage of insurers or of these entities even further. So there's an increased, in de increased demand in cyber because everyone can be hacked, everyone is seeing claims, and anyone can be a hacker. So these ransomware and these, these data breaches that are occurring uh, were a initially thought to only be targeted towards you know large entities and large corporations when in reality everyone is being targeted you know these hackers don't if they're getting fifty thousand dollars it doesn't matter if it's coming from a fortune 500 company or a mom and pop shop down the road now and this segues into the next emerging trend is the insurance lines that we do in the professional space you know eno dno epli crime cyber it's for everybody it's not just for large companies and the reason why is these smaller entities not not only do they have less controls, not only do they have less policies and procedures in place, not only are they not as sophisticated with strong IT departments or, or what have you, but they're more susceptible to going bankrupt if they incur such a large loss. Right. You know, these companies don't have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on their balance sheet in cash where they can pay out a claim should it happen. You know, a Fortune 500 company gets a breach or they, they have an EPLI claim and they're paying out a couple million dollars, it hurts, but they're not going under. You know, they're, the the mom and pop shop up the block, if they suffer five hundred thousand dollars, you know, they're they're firing for bankruptcy in the next you know, in the next few months. So it's important that, you know, outside of the the typical casualty lines that everyone knows that they need, that the professional lines and you know, the financial liability driven lines, uh, they're they're pitched and they're sold and they're and they're offered to everyone that's operating any entity of any size. What's the cost? association these days is it a, a huge lift for a mom and pop shop to secure all of these lines that they need to make sure that they're protected or is it financially not as much of an investment as it was years ago no great question i mean it, it's obviously relative to how large they are but the market is soft enough across dno and epli and cyber and so forth that it's very affordable you know they're not spending hundreds of thousand dollars on insurance you know, depending on the size, depending on the operation, location, and so forth. It shouldn't be you know, that hard of a it, sell. It's not that hard of a sell. And at the very least, it should be offered and, you know, let them make the decision uh, if they want to go with it or not. But, you know, knowing that the claim the claim environment that they're in, I, I'd imagine a lot of them will take it when they're properly educated on it.